So as the co-founder of the Africa Rising Foundation, an organization dedicated to promoting a positive image of Africa around the world, Daba Mandela has been following in the footsteps of his grandfather, former President Nelson Mandela. So besides having a thriving career as a political consultant, he is passionate about Africa and preserving the legacy of Tata Madiba. But today we get a peek into the lighter and fun side of his life. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Thank Nava. you. Thank you very much. So wonderful to have you here. Absolutely. Yeah. What's a typical Christmas Eve like at the Mandela home? Well, I mean, you know, things have changed a lot since the old man passed away. Yeah. And, of course, this year we lost the matriarch, um, Mama. Yeah. So, I don't know, to be honest with you. But what I can tell you is that uh, usually we will have a Christmas party, not really for ourselves, but for the village. Hmm. So, you know, my older brother, he's Mvezo. You know, he does, you know, toys and food and a little bit of music for the, for Abathali, we'll call them, the locals yes. in the yes. village. And so I'll be doing the same thing. You know, we have a, a couple of books to give them, toys, food, and a little bit of music for the kids. You know, oh. because, you know, those are some of the most poorest people in our village who can't afford that. So yeah. it's, a, it's an honor and a blessing for us to be able to do that. Wow, Beautiful. and you do it every single year. Unfortunately, I didn't do it last year, but this year we're going to do it bigger and better. But if you're not there, somebody is <laughs> doing it. It's just it's yeah. a part of the family, that's obviously. Right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I remember the first time we met, and I can imagine a lot of people have the same reaction to meeting you, is they can't help but fall in love with you. And also because you sound <laughs> exactly <laughs> Did you, like did you actually ever told you that before? Are you hearing yeah, this for the first time? I'm hearing this for the first time. Okay, voice. okay. From her, from, from her, yes. Yeah. From her. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, you must get that a lot because you do sound exactly like I him. think, obviously, people do miss the old man. So yeah. since then, I think the, it's like the voice that reminds them of, of the old man, yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we're just, just an aside, when you see people who've played Udata Matiba on, on, as, as characters and have tried to emulate his voice, do you sometimes cringe? <laughs> <laughs> Why do they just well, cast I mean, you? I really... Why they just cast you as the voiceover guy? <laughs> I can't really say much about the voice, but you know, make an effort as far as the pron pronunciation is concerned. Mm. You know, it's class, yeah. let's take a go, Yes, yeah. like Abela in Taba. Yeah, bo? Yeah. Like, just make an effort as far yeah. as that is concerned. Yeah. Try and make it sound authentic. Okay, but there's effort and then there's like. Like, it's hard. <laughs> yeah, but you get paid big bucks Trust so that you can yeah, practice yeah, yeah. so that's you can true, get it right. True, I mean, he was always getting paid big bucks. Yeah. Exactly. You know what exactly. I mean? And he did a good effort. He did a yeah, good yeah. effort. Yeah, he tried hard. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, we want to know about your book, Going to the Mountain. There's this part in here that I especially loved, um, which is the first time you meet your grandfather. Why don't you tell us about that? <laughs> so, um, as you can imagine, he was still in jail. Yeah. And uh, my parents told me we were going to see our grandfather in jail. And so, as an eight year old, I had a typical image of what jail would be like you know, concrete bars, yeah. dogs, and lots of security everywhere. But when we got there, it was nothing of what I had imagined. You know, it was actually a beautiful house, a beautiful house more than the one I stayed in. You know, there was a swimming pool. I didn't have a swimming pool. Yeah. Um, we, there was a chef. It was the first time I saw a chef, you know what I mean? Um, and of course, we met the man himself, and he was warm, and he was interested in every single one of us. And that was the first time I had an idea of what I wanted to be when I grew up. Oh, wow. You know, most kids want to be a fireman, a policeman. I told myself that day, when I grow up, I want to go to jail. Because <laughs> <laughs> so jail looks so dope, I though. I was like, what? Yeah. A swimming yeah. pool in jail? What do you want to be when you <laughs> grow up? Rich. <laughs> well, you're all grown up and you're far from in jail. And, I mean, I can imagine this is... Um, you say here, life lessons from my grandfather. I can imagine you learned so much from him, just verbally and stuff he would say to you, but I'm sure there's so much you learned just by observing. True. Um, True. How were you able to, to decide which lessons were going to go into the book, and was that a hard choice? Not really. To be honest, I try to put as much, actually all, um, I, I think I put all the, the, the lessons that he taught me, but you know, I've done a lot of interviews, as you can imagine, and one of the questions I asked me was, you know, he taught you all these lessons, but what lesson did you teach him? Mm. And I, I kind of struggled a little bit, and I had to think about that for a while, but now I kind of know what lesson I taught him. Which is? Which is, never trust somebody who always has the same opinion of you. Wow. Wow. 
You're going to have to explain that. You have to that's, elaborate. That's, that's, I'm, have I'm, to I'm elaborate. overthinking that Like, now. for example, as friends, you know, he had this friend that he talked about and said, you know, out of all these years, we've been friends for over 20 years. We've never had a single argument. Mm. We've never had a single different view from each other. And I'm mm. saying, no, man, there's something wrong here. I mean, think about your brother, your sister, even people that you are so fond of and yeah. you have the same interest. There's no ways you can always have the same... You don't always Opinion see of each other. No, of yeah. all the time, no matter uh, what happens. Yeah. And that's when I said, something is fishy here. Yeah. And guess what, what happened one time? The fishiness came out and I caught him red-handed. Oh, really? wow. And what did your grandfather say? He didn't say anything. He was just happy that I was there, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah. Wow. You know, he was happy that I was there. And that's the story that's in the book. Yeah. That's, so you got to check that one out. That. I'm Somebody yeah. well-respected in the South African society. Mm. who double-crossed my grandfather, you know, went behind his back. Um, so, yeah, it's all in the book, guys. Wow. Yeah. Okay, I'm looking Something forward to Something that you must that. have experienced growing mm. up, because I think a lot of uh, children or grandchildren of really prolific people, you know, fear of, or feel the same thing or go through the same um, kind of issues, is having to fill those shoes. Because, and even if you've got no intention to, even if you don't want to, other people are going to look at you and your surname and have some kind of expectation sure. of who they want you to be. Sure. How do you live up to that? Or how do you live without feeling like you have to live up to that? Yeah, with integrity. Well, first of all, I think one needs to understand and recognise that we each have our own path that yeah. we need to work on, you know, in this journey of life. Um, secondly, I think, you know, the most important thing our grandfather, you know, instilled in us was that one needs to have a good education, right? Mm. And one needs to be able to give back. How you give back, it's up to you. And so that is the most important thing, is that whether you're a filmmaker, whether you're a sportsman or a musician, it really doesn't matter. It's about making sure that you give back to the that. people that are underprivileged in your community, starting with your community. Give a voice to the voiceless and stand up for those who can't stand up for themselves. Yeah. And there's so many ways to do that. Um, so, I'm, obviously, I grew up with my grandfather since the age of 11, so I don't feel in any kind of way that I have to fill the shoes because those shoes can never be filled. Mm, yeah. I mean, 27 years in jail alone, mm. you know, says it all, you know what I mean? So, yeah. it's really about finding your own path um, and, you know, being successful in your own ambitions um, and, and giving back in one way or another. And basically. honoring yourself, yeah. yeah. Tell us about the Africa Rising Project Foundation. So the Africa Rising Foundation was started in 2009, and basically um, I was very lucky, of course, growing up with my grandfather, I traveled around. And so I remember the first time we traveled to uh, Disney World, and uh, you know, you go into the line to go into the roller coaster, and eventually we got into the front, and the gentleman who's helping people is like, hey, so where are you from? I'm from South Africa. And he says, um, how big do the lines get? And I'm like, what? I look at my cousin, I was quite startled. I was like, sorry, sir, I don't work at the zoo. <laughs> you know, I'm not a game ranger. I have no idea how big lions yeah. get. And then we travel to London, and you meet people. Hey, where are you from? South Africa. Oh, I heard it's dangerous. I mean, do I need security and bodyguards to come and travel to your country? Because I heard it's beautiful. I must see it. But now it's a very unsafe place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I say, mm, no, sir. My grandfather's the president. I don't have a bodyguard. I think you'll be fine. You know what I mean? Wow. Like, chill out, relax. Yeah. It's not as bad as you see. And then I realized that people outside the continent of Africa have very little knowledge on Africa. Yeah. And the little knowledge that they have is what is perpetuated in mainstream media that Africa is a place of war, poverty, disease, and dictators. And the only positive thing really being safari. Yeah. You know, not the people, but yeah. the animals. <laughs> a bit of a game woman. drive. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I said, no, man. <laughs> Guys, we have to do something about this. We have to change this image of Africa. And then, you know, came back home, me and my cousin Gweku called our friends, called about 10 guys, 20 people rocked up to the meeting. So we realized that this was something that was not special about us, but in the minds of the youth in general, you yeah. know, those who are obviously educated and plugged in to the, to the global uh, sort of uh, communications, social media, etc. And we decided that the best way to do that would be through, to empower young people so that young people can say, I'm an African, I know what it means to be an African, and I am proud of it. And so we felt, because we understand that it's also something that's going to, it's not going to happen overnight. This is something that's going to take generations. Mm -hmm. So we need to empower young people through education, through entrepreneurship development, technology, um, and celebrating African culture. 
So, for example, one of our initiatives uh, that we've been doing for the past three years is that we take young people in our village. You know, young people in our village finish high school without even touching a computer. Hmm. So how are we wow. as an organization trying to gear up a new generation of African leaders to compete on a global level without having sound knowledge of how to use technology? Yeah. Right? So it's become very important. So we took 60 kids, it was 40 high school and 20 unemployed youth on a three-month coding program. They wrote the exam with Oracle and then they pass. So for those who are still in school, we encourage them to you know, go to the second level, third level. And for those unemployed youth, we try to find them jobs. Because without a, com without a computer, your mm. CV, exactly. where do you send it to? I yeah. mean, there's so many things in the 21st so century. Things. You know, it's all really it's based around, world. you know, yeah. whether it's agriculture, whether it's making clothes, it doesn't matter. Technology yeah. is infused in everything that we Just do. Just upskill everybody. That's amazing. Now, I, I, I think I'm going to get the opportunity to upskill you a little bit. <laughs> how, how, are, how are you in the kitchen? <laughs> I'm terrible. <laughs> Great. Well, I'll be teaching you how to do something fun. Cool. <laughs> a little bit later. Something easy, I hope. <laughs>